Okay, you guys, I just took these out of the oven. They're looking great. Look at that. They're a nice brown color. Let them cool for a few, few minutes before setting them on the cooling rack. And I'll tell you too, they did not come out as dense as I thought. I think the baking soda helps to kind of give them a little bit of lift, but oh, I love the little crunch from the nuts, the sweetness of the dates and the little bit of hint of tartness from the cherries. Oh. Hey, hi you guys. Um, I'm Amy, Amy Roloff. So thank you for coming into my little kitchen. Um, so appreciated all the time. Yeah, it was kind of a good day today. It was, uh, well, what is today? T uh, today was Wednesday when I'm, well, it's Wednesday night now that I'm making cookies. I felt in the mood to make cookies. Um, I don't know if it was because it's the first day of the month and yesterday was the last day of the month that um, I just felt kind of like, what am I doing? I, I don't feel like doing anything, but I am so glad that I did not go back to bed, take a nap, because I could, or I did not uh, find the motivation to take daisies right down here uh, for a walk. So I was really glad I did that. So it got me moving, it got me going, and I'm definitely drinking plenty of water. Trying to not slip on the old, um, you know, just watching what I eat and making sure I'm not gaining 10 more pounds. I don't need to do that. I've already lost some. I don't need to gain it back. So anyway, today we are going to make cookies. I felt in the mood to make cookies. In fact, I'm going to make another, I don't know if I'll make another cookie tonight or make it tomorrow along with something, another dessert that I thought Chris would like. But anyway, I am going to make Michigan Rocks cookies. I've read up on these because I remember having them as a kid. I remember them having them during the holidays, maybe occasionally like throughout the year and um, you know, stuff like that. But I think mainly during the holidays and I why they're called Michigan Rocks. This began all the way back in like the late 1800s, early 1900s. And they really developed probably a little bit more in the Pennsylvania area in the coal mining region. Well, Pennsylvania has a coal mining region. I can see where it kind of, this cookie, Michigan Rocks cookies, developed in Michigan because we had a lot of mining of, of ore and iron and stuff like that. Uh, I think, I, I'm not sure if I'm wrong, if I'm correct on this because I've read so much online. Because. Usually if there's a history to something I'm making, especially if it comes from my home state area, you know, I like to try and find something if there is even a history to it. In fact, I read on this one post, this one, this one woman has collected recipes. Um, I don't even know how she found these, but like in the 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, like what did they use and how did they bake then compared to what and how we bake now, obviously. <laughs> We have a whole bunch of more equipment and accessories to bake with, to cook with, and all, you know, all that other good stuff. Uh, so anyway, um, she had found that these, you know, came from there as well, uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan. But it, the title, Michigan Rocks, cookies, kept even if you were in Pennsylvania. And I'm not sure if the Germans, uh, that uh, nationality, or cultural or whatever uh, came from them when they immigrated here or Scandinavia or something along those lines because we had a lot of Polish um, people that lived in Michigan. I mean, I had a lot of uh, Polish friends that's families were Polish and we, um, you know, I, I had some, uh, shared some meals with them that were Polish, but anyway, so I'm not sure what exactly the nationality of these cookies. I just know that they came and they began back in the late 1800s, 1900s. And I remember growing up with these cookies and I think they were made usually during the holidays, Christmas. But 
you know, half of the desserts I make, unless, okay, maybe it's pumpkin pie. I'm not sure I would have that in April. Um, but most things that I make, you know, make them any time of the year, whenever you feel like it. Uh, of course, sometimes you can't always get the ingredients in season. If you can still get those ingredients and you're paying out of season prices, which isn't always good right now because the grocery bill is way high. I don't know, but anyway, so I'm trying to see what I have in my pantry and what can I make out of there. And so I had all of this in my pantry, except for the dates. I, I did go buy the dates. And for some reason I, I got these dates. Um, I've seen dates, you know, and um, I don't know, by Sunmade, who makes the raisins, I think. Uh, stuff like that. But these came from California. California dates, go figure. Dates are really plums, just like raisins are really grapes. Uh, but these happen to be organic. I probably paid a little bit too much for them, but I saw them. I got them. I needed dates for this recipe. So yes, there are dates. Do I eat a lot of dates? No. But I so remember this cookie from growing up. So we're gonna probably have about a, a cup of dates, chopped up dates. And instead of raisins, because of Michigan, I am going to do dry cherries. These look dark, like they would be raisins, but they're kind of like tart cherry. You know what, I tell you, mm, so good, so good. And so I think they'll complement a cup of chopped up dry cherries. I think they'll complement the sweet dates very well. Gotta have a little crunch. So I'm gonna toast up some of these walnuts, chop them up like a rough chop, about a cup of those. I have a cup of butter, I've got three eggs, two cups of brown sugar, three cups of flour, and I think this is going to be somewhat of a stiff dough. These don't spread out a lot, which is okay, because they're called Michigan Rocks cookies. And so they're supposed to look like little rocks. And I've got some uh, baking soda, a teaspoon of baking soda. I'll add a little bit of salt, a little bit of vanilla flavoring, a little bit of cinnamon, a dash of nutmeg. So let's get going. And I think these are gonna taste wonderful. I think the main important thing is not to overbake them. So let's go. Okay, so I put the walnuts in a little saute pan. I have them on low. Um, I wish you all were here to remind me not to forget about them so they don't burn. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some of these cherries. They just need a little rough chop. They're, I mean, they're pretty tiny to begin with. So anyway, get my spoon on the way. But yeah, I just thought cherries would be good in this. And I need a cup. Whoops. And if I have too much here, I tell you, dried cherries, great for snacking. That's all I gotta say. Great for snacking. So, if I like to snack on them, I'm glad they're in the cookie. So I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. And the dates, I will have to chop up a little more. Got to prevent the cherries from sticking to my knife. You know, it's so funny when uh, Daisy goes outside, you know, I'll, I'll hear this little woof, woof. It's like she's making everyone know that she's outside in the backyard but she doesn't do a full on bark, which tell you truth, I'm grateful for. I think that would definitely irritate Chris and probably bother me a little bit if she did that all the time. Okay, I think these are going to be it. And I definitely think I have more than a cup here. So I'll make sure I measure these out. Well, I don't know, maybe just, well, it might be slightly over a cup, but definitely all you need is a cup. 
want to go a little less, you can go a little less. And if you don't like uh, walnuts, there was a little stem, uh, use pecans. Let me see about these nuts over here. I don't know, I just think roasting nuts just bring out their flavor a lot more. It's got that nice toastiness to it. So I'm gonna cut these in half. Maybe I should get a different knife. And I'm just gonna cut them in little chunks. And if you wanna cut the half again, when it comes to the bigger part, feel free. But you know, you don't want them too tiny. Okay, this is gonna take me a moment. Definitely gonna take me a moment. So I cut the half in half, so this should be okay. And I'm just gonna put them in here. I almost wanna, oops, oh dear. It landed in the baking soda. You know, I almost want a different knife. Let's see if this knife will be a little better. Okay. And I'm probably just cutting, oops, each uh, slice into like four pieces if you want them smaller than that. I don't know, maybe I will have to do them. Well, these dates are a little bit, these dates are a little bit bigger than I thought. Even cutting them in half. These are sweet though, which is good. I think it'll, like I said, I think it'll complement well with the cherries. I'm just gonna have to make sure that they don't stick. I was gonna add this in with the butter, the cream sugar, or the sugar, uh, and the eggs and stuff, but tell you the truth, I don't know, I was thinking about dusting them with flour, but maybe the cookie won't adhere to them if I did that but I don't want this to be big clumps of dates either. <gasps> Let me go check my nuts. Okay, I got them just in the nick of time. When they just start turning a light brown or, you know, toasted. I definitely turn off the burner. Hopefully they won't continue to cook, but after I get this date done, I'm gonna take them off and put them in a little bowl. Do I have a little bowl? I don't know where all my bowls went. I don't remember breaking anything. Okay, on another recipe, our dishwasher was not working for two days. And I had just got done, you know, doing one of these cooking videos. I'm gonna take the nuts out. I don't want them to keep cooking or toasting in the, um, in the pan that's still hot. Oh yeah. Anyway, the dishwasher did not work for two days. I was so glad that I made one recipe that would last us two days. You'll, you'll be seeing that recipe here in a minute. And so um, I was like, oh my gosh, what did they do back then without a dishwasher? But then again, I think it was much simpler cooking or if you were well off, you had servants do a lot of that stuff for you. Anyway, Chris worked hard at it. He 
looked online, he went to the store, he got a, this, uh, I don't know, like a electrical power meter thing to see if the power was going to the rest of the stuff. But why wasn't the power going to the dishwasher? And he just fiddled around with it. He talked to an appliance person. And I was glad because I wasn't in the mood to spend like, I don't know, $300 for someone to come out here and get it fixed in 20 minutes. Anyway, he was looking underneath the dishwasher again and then found this one little piece that was kind of like, looked like it was half out. And so he, um, he just pulled it out, put it back in, boom, everything went back on. And we're like, yeah, right. It cannot be that simple. <laughs> when it comes to electronics and technology, I'm like, nothing is that simple. Uh, but dishwasher was on. We, uh, um, turned the dishwasher on because there were dirty dishes in it. We were hoping that it would keep going and it did. So, Chris saved us some money. We didn't have to spend like $300 on getting it fixed because I did not realize how expensive a brand new dishwasher would be. And besides, we prevented something from going who knows where. But yeah, brand new dishwashers, even basic, I think, is like $600. So an average dishwasher is like eight. And I'm like, I, I'm in no mood. I, I don't have that. No mood to spend that kind of money. So anyway. Well, I'll be back with you after I cut up some more date because... You know, this will take me a moment more. And then we'll be back to making Michigan Rocks, Michigan Rocks cookies. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish rough chop of these walnuts. I don't want them too big of chunks, but I don't want them really small either. So we're making Michigan Rocks cookies. also read online so many people grandmother made this for them they remember them you know growing up and just like I did so I'm pretty excited to go back to a traditional cookie that I forgot about I wish I had my grandmother's cookbook with some of her notes in it you know it, it's like we we grow up with some of these traditional restaurant rest recipes you know they might have been you know all over the world type of recipes or something like that but we grew up with them because we had them often enough and then they became a tradition it reminds us of our childhood or something else then when we get older uh, we kind of miss some of those recipes or we want to go back to them and see how we can change it up or something like that so anyway Okay, I think I gotta get another measuring cup. I want about a cup of nuts. This is a half a cup here. Hopefully I won't have too many big nuts. So here's half a cup there. Okay, and then we'll start, um, some of these pieces are too big. That's what happens when you do a rough chop. You know, I, it's like, I don't want them too small, but I don't want them too big either. Well, I just got just enough. This will be just enough here. Okay, these are just crumbs here. So it's almost a cup. It'll be good enough. I'll just put it back in this thing. And then we'll get going. I don't know, what's, what are some of the cookies you still bake, that you still like, and it was part of your childhood? 
I don't think I need to cut up anything more. So I think I'm going to get rid of, there was a nut on the loose. I'm going to get rid of this cutting board. Okay. I got to make sure I don't step on Daisy's paw. Okay, so we're going to cream the butter. Hopefully it's at room temperature. I tell you, my house is cold. Okay. We're going to cream this up. It'll take a few minutes. I'll make sure I have everything. So I've got the sugar, I've got the butter, I have the eggs, I have the flour, the baking soda, I've got the cherries and the dates and the vanilla and the cinnamon. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Okay, I'm going to do an egg at a time. See, look at that. I already got a shell in here. What? I read online somewhere that the easiest way to get a shell is by using the egg shell itself. So anyway, here's one egg. There's two. Before I add the other one in, probably because this butter isn't room temperature enough, so I'm hoping these cookies will come out. I tell ya. So you should. Use your beaters until your butter is creamy. I wonder if the heat of my hand will help. I mean, if you do put butter in the microwave, you've got to be really careful that you're not breaking down the milk solids in your butter. Stop this again and just beat down that butter. Okay. back after this butter gets creamed and blended in with the eggs. I think it's going to be a minute. And by the way, it should not be a minute. I just don't think, I mean, I had the butter sitting out, but it just wasn't soft enough. Okay, so we've got the butter cream with the eggs. Let me remove some of this stuff. We're going to finish adding the rest of the brown sugar to this. in a little bit of vanilla. I think my hands are too greasy from the butter. Ah. There we go. A little vanilla. Ah. Just had a little bit left in there. So to the three cups of um, flour, I'm going to add in the baking soda. I'm going to add in a little bit of salt. I don't know, a quarter of a teaspoon maybe. 
a little bit of the cinnamon. I don't know, maybe a teaspoon. But I only want a dash of the nutmeg. I, I don't want a lot of the nutmeg, but I do want a little bit for flavor. So we're just gonna do a little bit of that. Probably just three scrapes. I just did three scrapes for the nutmeg. So these are the dry. Okay, I think my butter and everything is finally creaming. I think this is what I did wrong. I added the eggs. I should have added the butter and the sugar and then the eggs. How silly of me. How many times have I made cookies or cupcakes? But see, even if you've been doing it a long time, you're bound to make some errors still. Even if you think it comes so automatic to you. Okay, so. I am going to go ahead and just fold in the nuts, the dates, and the cherries. Because I'm afraid that if I add in the flour, it's gonna be very tough to evenly distribute the cherries, the dates, because this is a stiff dough. I got my oven heated to 350 degrees, and we're only gonna cook these for about maybe 10 minutes. So, let's see here, I'm gonna add in the dates. One cup of dates, one cup of cherries, Rough chopped nuts, about a cup. Just gonna fold this in here. I think this will help distribute these, these three ingredients a little better within the wet ingredients. Now, if you wanna go ahead and use your mixer, you can go ahead and do that. But I am going to try and do it by hand. So we're gonna add in a, about half of the flour. I think it'll be easy to incorporate all of the flour if we're just doing it, not a little bit at a time, but just like half of it at a time. And I'm just kind of folding it in. I don't wanna over mix it. I'm gonna do the other half. Sorry, I'm get some of my stuff out of the way here. It's so funny, Daisy doesn't know what I'm making and she always thinks I'm gonna drop some on the floor <laughs> for her to get. Occasionally that will happen when I'm making dinner. I love that dog. I love her in a different way than I did Felix. Just wanna make sure I get, I almost wanna stand on a stool for this part to get a better angle. Okay. Oh, these smell so good. I'm hoping that with the tart cherries, it's not as stiff as I thought it was gonna be, but I think it's stiff for the beater on the mixer. Okay, I think we're done here. So I'm gonna prepare a baking sheet and we will We will get to baking, okay. 
Okay, these should not spread out too much, but I definitely don't want to put them too close together just in case. It's kind of a stiff dough, but not as stiff as I would have thought. And they don't have to be perfectly round since they are called Michigan rocks because they're supposed to look like rocks. Kind of round, kind of lumpy, kind of bumpy. Isn't that kind of cool? So I'm just gonna probably just kind of put 12 on here. I probably need a couple of these a little too big. So we're going to put them in the oven, like I said, 350 degrees. I'm going to put them in there for about 10 minutes. See how they look, because it really depends on your oven. I think my oven is, gosh, what is it? 2007, 2017, 15 years old. And I think all ovens should last a long time. But nowadays, who even knows? Appliances don't last that long. Okay, I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more to this little puny one here. There we go. Okay. So these go in the oven for about 10 minutes. Let's see what they look like. Because I am notoriously forgetting, I set my timer for 10 minutes. So I'll see you back here. Okay, you guys, I just took these out of the oven. They're looking great. Look at that. They're a nice brown color. Let them cool for a few, few minutes before setting them on the cooling rack. And I tell you too, they did not come out as dense as I thought. I think the baking soda helps to kind of give them a little bit of lift, but oh. I love the little crunch from the nuts, the sweetness of the dates and the little bit of hint of tartness from the cherries. Oh. Mm. If it wasn't so late, this would go great with a cup of coffee or, um, or a cup of tea or milk. Anyway, these are great cookies. So Michigan rocks, they kind of look like rocks, a little bumpy, but I think these are really good. So I'm going to finish making up the rest of them. Okay, I have my second batch out and they're a nice golden brown around the edges. It's kind of hard to tell when you use cinnamon in your batter, but yeah. These cook for about 10 minutes, maybe 10 to 11 minutes. And I don't know, maybe because sometimes um, if you don't want to chop up the dates or the cherry. I didn't think I did it as fine, uh, but if you want them more chunky, they will probably look more like rocks. And Michigan has a lot of rocks in its lakes, um, especially Lake Superior. You've never seen such colorful rocks in Lake, Mich uh, in Lake Superior. Lake Michigan has a lot of them too. They're just so colorful. And I've never seen them um, rocks like that in other lakes. 
But this will probably, this batch will probably make you what? Um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, two dozen, maybe two and a half, three dozen cookies. So enough to share, give away, or chow down on cookies. But these taste awesome. I just got a little bit more of the batter left here. And so I'm going to finish doing that up. But in the meantime, I hope you give these cookies a try. They're Michigan Rocks. They got dates and if you don't want to put in the dry cherries, go ahead and use raisins. You can even, uh, to add a little color, you can even maybe chop up some Marchino cherries or put one on top. I don't know, that's up to you. Um, you can put in a different kind of nut. I think the walnuts go well with this, but uh, I think the cherries and the dates complement each other. So make these Michigan Rocks cookies. Check it out over at Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen and check it out on my YouTube channel as well. You'll see the recipe video and the recipe, but thank you for being in my little kitchen and keep enjoying gathering around the table with family and friends. I so appreciate it. Bye.